Hi there guys, welcome back. This is Devilcube Tutorial here. And thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial. And today we're going to be uh, uh, learning uh, a cool technique this time. So uh, the last video I uploaded was how to model a piston in Cinema 4D. So uh, I'm just going to leave a link on the screen and in the description for you guys to go check it out. And today in this tutorial we'll be learning to uh, rig this piston. Um, in uh, Cinema 4D, uh, we're not going to be using any Expresso just for the sake of those who are beginners and are new to Cinema 4D. We're going to be using some basic inbuilt uh, Cinema 4D uh, dynamic stuff to get this thing working. So um, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be using uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, the piston which I had modeled because. Uh, it's, it's kind of heavy in my environment and it's going to kind of lag if there's a lot of movement. So I'm just going to be using some primitive shapes uh, so that um, you guys get an idea and I'll be explaining in detail. So uh, this is the uh, piston that uh, we had uh, modeled and uh, I'm just going to be creating uh, this part uh, by using just a simple thing. I have uh, I've already ha I actually have it modeled. So I'm just going to import that and we're going to have this uh, shaft kind of a thing and uh, we're going to be putting a cylinder through this hole and uh, get this thing moving. So uh, first thing I'm just going to go render, change my render settings so we have a better look at it. Okay. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go and grab a uh, cylinder and we're going to set the orientation to plus uh, Z and uh, then we want to kind of increase oops we want to increase the scale of this to say probably around 150 and uh, then we're going to go and reduce the height to say something like 50 okay not 50 let's set this to a hundred probably okay uh, actually let's set this to 150 and uh, then we're going to make this editable by pressing c on the keyboard or clicking this button and we, we are going to go to the loop. We're going to go to the points mode. We're going to press K on our keyboard to get the knife tool, or you can go right click and choose K. And we're going to set the mode to loop, and we're going to make a few cuts. So uh, we're going to make two cuts. So we're going to make it one by third, one by third, one by third. Now, how do I actually decide exactly how much it is? It's pretty simple. So um, we're going to go. And just place our cursor and we're going to hold shift. When we hold shift and move our cursor, you see that it's kind of locked. That cut is locked into position. Right? And it's kind of gray in color. And we, we want to go to this offset. I'm going to set it to 33. And we just want to click and that makes the cut exactly at 33%. Now let's go again and hold down shift. And let's go and set it 33 this time. And let's click looks like it didn't come properly so let's control z that hold down shift oops so uh, hold uh, shift and uh 33 plus 33 is 66 so let's just 66 and boom we have what's wrong let's try that again ah so we want to set this to 50 percent and uh, that is because uh, when we take the the what cinema 40 takes is it takes the uh, distance between this edge and this edge that we just cut so the nearest edges so I'm just going to go and set this to 50 and hit OK and boom we have there we go uh, and now I'm going to press uh, UL on the keyboard to get the loop selection U and you can see L which has the loop selection and I'm going to click on this and click delete and now we have this opening but it kind of looks pretty ugly so we're going to fix that we just want to go to the points mode we're going to right click and choose close polygon hole and we just want to click here and we want to click here and there we go we have our um a, a base kind of a thing over here okay uh, so now uh, as you can see here i have imported uh, these two models over here so this is the head part and uh, this is the middle shaft and i think this the, the cylinder is pretty darn big so i'm just going to go and scale that down and uh, scale it down real tight Okay, I think that's uh, pretty reasonable. Okay, and uh, I think I'm gonna go and uh, move these things apart. I'm gonna press T and move these apart. Okay, 
Uh, okay, that looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to take this middle part and the head, and I'm just going to kind of drag it down. We want to drag it kind of real down over here. So, because it's kind of a starting point as where you want to start it. And uh, this we're going to put this below the axis over here. So, uh, we can kind of, uh, I mean, I'll explain to you when we get there. Okay, uh, so next step. We want to go and grab a cube. And we just want to uh, reduce down the size of that to say something like 10. And we just want to take the cube. And we're gonna call. Okay, we're just gonna name it cube, and we're gonna bring it down. Okay, bring it pr pretty down, down. Okay, now we can start rigging this thing. So the first thing we wanna do is we want. Uh, oh, before we do that, just one more thing. Uh, we wanna go grab a cylinder and just put it through this. Cause here in the picture I post uh, 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 the model, uh, you, you see we have this huge hole. So this huge hole is for a cylinder to go in. So uh, this hole is pretty small over here. So I'm going to go and just grab a small cylinder. And we're going to set the orientation to plus X. Sorry, plus Z. Uh, it. Plus Z. And we want to bring it down. And we want to scale it pretty much in. So scale this puppy in. And let's go and scale it down. OK, that looks good. I like it. Now, uh, the thing is we want uh, this cylinder to be a part of this base. So I'm going to so make this editable. And I'm going to place this two together. I'm going to right click and choose um, connect objects plus delete. But we need to make sure that the center of this cylinder is on the center of the axis. So if we go here and the coordinates, we see that it's zeroed out. So I'm just going to call this uh, bottom for now. And now we can start rigging this cool thing. OK. Uh, so I think this thing is looking pretty ugly. So I'm just going to go and make press UL on the keyboard to get the loop selection. And I want to take this. Oh, OK, we want to press Control A, right click, and choose Optimize. So what Optimize does is it joins all the points and makes them one piece. OK, so I'm just going to go and click on this. And now if you see, if I move it, it's, it, it's kind of touched together. So I'm going to go and uh, press Shift and select that one as well. And I'm just going to move this inside. OK. And I'm going to do the same here. Press UL on the keyboard. I'm going to select this. Se select these points. OK. Then we're going to hold down Shift, select this point, and we want to move this in. OK. Uh, cool. Next step. Uh, we're going to go and go to simulate dynamics and we want to choose a connector. Now we're going to take the connector and move it here inside the bottom. And then we want to go to the connector settings. We want to go and choose bottom as object A and the cube as object B. Okay. And then we want to go and bring this connector thing down okay so if we go into our front view we can kind of see it in place and i'm just going to go to the display and change the draw size to 800 so this is basically the uh, cylinder kind of a thing that we have okay the cylinder kind of a thing uh, at the size does not matter that's just for visual reference so uh, no need to worry about that much Okay. Oops. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. After that, what we're gonna do is we wanna go and uh, choose a motor object. So we gotta simulate dynamics and choose a motor, and we're gonna drag the motor inside. And in the angular speed in the object app, I'm gonna set that to 360, and I'm gonna set the torque to 100. So if you guys don't know what torque is. If you go and choose show help, it says torque exerts exerts torque around motor's z-axis. The larger the object mass, the greater is the value needed. So this is basically to give the effect of uh, the, the strength and the density. So I'm going to put 100 for this. And then we're going to go to the motor and uh, we're going to go and uh, drop in the uh, bottom as object A. And then we're going to go and drop in the Q as object B. And now if we hit play, 
nothing happens. That's because since it's a dynamic thing, we need to add the dynamic step. So I'm going to choose the bottom, right click, simulation tax, rigid body, and I'm going to go to cube, right click, simulation tax, and choose a collider body. And now when you hit play, we see we have this thing, you know, kind of rotating around. But as you can see, that's not what we want to write it. We want this, uh, the, the, this cylinder thing to rotate. So how do we do that? We're just going to take the connector and we're going to go to the coordinate axis and zero that out. And now that becomes the center. And now when we hit play, you see, we have the middle thing that's spinning around. And that looks realistic. That's what that's what we want. Cool, isn't it? Okay, so let's go back and uh, let's uh, do the rest of these things. Uh, I'm going to go and co copy paste this cloner, sorry, connector. And I'm going to drag it inside middle. And here on the object, for object A, I'm going to set that to middle. And for object B, I'm going to set that to bottom. So we go, so we go up the hierarchy. So for this connector, we put bottom and then Q. And for this connector, we put middle and bottom. Okay, and uh, now let's hit play. We will not see happen anything. We will not see anything happen. That is absolutely because we need to add a dynamic stack. So I'm just going to click on this dynamic tab. I'm going to hold control and drop it on that. And now we still don't see anything. So uh, here in the connector, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, there it is, it's playing. Okay, so now we can see it's actually uh, going along with the flow, but we still need to finish one more part because we want the head to be connected. So let's copy paste this cloner. We're gonna drop it into the head. And here in the head, we are actually going to go and uh, let's see, we wanna go to the object. We wanna drag head as the reference A object. And B object, we're going to set that to middle. And now let's hit just play and see what we get. Okay. It's not moving. So we're going to take the connector over here and we're going to drag this up like that. Because we want to assume that there is another um, piece of, uh, of a shaft over here, of a tube kind of a thing. Think, think of it as realistic. So there's kind of a something inside that's holding this, this, this thin pipe and the head together. And now let's hit play. And we still don't see it working. So let me just take this connector. Oh, yes, I forgot. We're going to take the head, right click, choose simulation tax, and rigid body. There we go. Now let's try. Boom. There we go. But our shaft is not correct. Our dynamics thing is moving. So let's see how to fix that. What we're going to do is we are going to go and uh, go to simulate dynamics and choose a connector. Now this connector, I'm going to go and change this to a uh, slider. And I'm going to go to the display and uh, okay, the coordinates, I'm going to set the P rotation to 90. So it is standing upwards. And then we want to go and drag this up so that this centerpiece is right over here where the uh, I told you the uh, this shaft kind of thing would be there it is okay and then we are going to the connector go to object and we're going to set object a as head and the object b as the cube and now if we hit play we see that so what basically is doing is it is connecting the, these two, the cube on the bottom and this thing, and it is moving in an up down direction. So if I hide the head, you actually can see what's happening. And let me hide the middle as well. The, this, the, this connector slider thing is moving up and down. That's it. It's just moving up and down. Now how cool is that? So if you just uncheck these two, you see we have a nice dynamic animation here. So that's how we create this dynamic uh, piston movement in Cinema 4D. Um, it, I know it's pretty simple and it kind of took uh, quite a lot of time, but uh, I hope you guys learned something new and interesting. And uh, thank you guys very much once again to watching this tutorial. Uh, I am best. I am De Devil Cube Tutorials here, here, and I will see you in another future tutorial. Till then, take care. Bye bye.